Well, that's close. Back up, off, back. You just have a little paint on your nose, it's okay. Okay. We're halfway done with this project and we're like, hey, let's make a video and show people how we did it. So we're gonna show you how we take these dollar store buckets that we actually got for free from one of our vendors and turn them into planters that we're gonna sell for $24.95. So these are a couple that we've already done. You can see we've got the salt wash with the paint and some IOD molds, and we're gonna show you how we got to this point. So we have our IOD molds out. You can tell we don't take super good care of them because they're covered in paper clay, but we're using resin today because that sets up really fast and we're able to get it on there and also get some waxing and detail work done without having to let it dry. If you use clay, that's fine, but after you paint it, you need to let it dry overnight before you get waxes on it and rub it. Zeb's using resin, one part of each. Be careful, do not get it on your hands. And if you're sensitive to fumes, you might wanna wear a respirator or do it outside. Zeb does this part because it requires exactness. We just use a disposable cup because it's not something you're gonna be able to use when you're done. Very official stir with a popsicle stick. Hey, it comes in the kit. It comes in the kit that you can purchase at jamierayvintage.com. How are we doing this? What are we spelling? Fleurs, F-L-E-U-R-S. So this is the Harper mold. It's a little bit difficult to get it to pour just right. It's easy to use these with paper clay. They're pretty tiny. There you go, look at that, like a boss, F-L. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna pour this in here and we're gonna let it set up. All right, so we're also using the Cameo mold to do some flowers, because I think that'd be cute to have those on top and then it'll say flowers underneath. We're just gonna, I got a lot extra, so we're gonna pour some. That's fine, you just pour well, I'm away. doing all the flower ones. I might not need all of them. You could get ones, crazy but... with it. This girl's got a lot of flowers in her hair. This is true, but do you have enough? Is there enough for that gal? Yep. Oh, there we go. So now we're gonna make up some more salt wash. We're using prairie gray. This is just gonna be the base color. I know it's not very pretty to look at. That's a lot. I know, I realize that. <laughs> so I've added my salt wash and I'm gonna go ahead and use this volunteer fork. We have just determined this is the salt wash fork. <laughs> Luckily it was 25 cents at the thrift store. Cause sometimes it's hard to mix up with plastic forks because then it breaks them. It does say a one to one ratio of paint to salt wash, but you can do whatever you want. You're gonna realize if you use DIY paint that you want much less because the paint itself is clay based, so it's already thick. These are setting up already. I had a little bit of overpour on the S, but when it comes out, it won't be fully cured, and I think I can cut it real easy with some scissors. The magic of TV, I already have some done. I just used construction adhesive because we're gluing resin to metal, and this just works really well. You can get it in smaller tubes. I put it all over the back and glued it on, and it is now dry enough that I can go ahead and paint. Part of the reason I'm using salt wash is for the look, but also because this says floors and garden and stuff on it. And I kind of want to cover that up. So by adding texture, it's going to kind of cover that situation up. So I'm going to come on here and go ahead and slap this on. The other reason I'm using salt wash is because it sticks really well to shiny surfaces. And these are very, very shiny. If you wanted to just use regular paint, I think you could probably sand them down, but I'm not gonna. There is a little trick once you get it onto your molds, and I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. You can see that you now no longer can see where it says herbs. So I just take a little artist brush and dig out my letters and the detail. Otherwise you will completely lose what it is that you're doing. But I like to use this also because it kind of fills in the edge and then you don't have like a big line. On this one too, I'm gonna to go around the edges and make sure it's shoved all the way underneath and just kind of dab it so it doesn't look weird. And I'm gonna pull it off the mold. Because otherwise you're gonna lose all of that detail you worked so hard to do. We're just going to be painting the backs of these, not super exciting, but then we'll flip them over and paint the front side. We're doing DIY's white swan, and then eventually we will bring back that base color for some fun texture. Now comes the fun part, you get to paint the front. Although, it's interesting to get down in all these little crevices. It takes it from looking kind of like poopy brown to like nice clean white. And then we'll bring back just a little bit of the brown. I 
feel like I'm in production mode. I have now painted 11 of these twice. And I got this gotta dry and distress. And then there's waxing. And then there's waxing. And then there's waxing. Here we go. We are wet distressing and bringing back all the base color that we had underneath, which was that prairie gray, and bringing out a lot of the detail. Bringing out the base layer of prairie gray adds a ton of detail that didn't have, like it was just boring, one color, then another color, but the contrast is really good. So I'm going to do this to all of these pieces and then I'll decide how I'm gonna finish them. I've got DIY liquid patina, just applying it here with a small brush, it's a very small area. And then I've got a corner of the JRV paper. It's a little teeny tiny. You get it wetter. This is arch, so it's not. It one says herbs, form. and these are daisies. Are they herbaceous daisies? You yeah, know, there was a bunch of different flower things, and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna go with this because I had a bird cut out, and I'm like, no, that doesn't work. That's cute. Okay, a second little mini decoupage. Your big paws getting in front of the camera. Let's see how good I cut this out. Like a boss. I think that's all right. Yeah, you did a good job. Well, and I'm gonna come back and do gold and black wax for the frame, so kind of fill in the edges there. All right, one more. Let's see. Oh, I guess we got two more. Two more. So we're just using DIY's liquid patina. This is an all-natural take a posh medium transfer gel and top coat, and it works amazing. We've tried other stuff and it really is the best. I hope you're good with your blending because this one didn't get cut out as well. Okay, before any decorative wax, we're just gonna hit everything with DIY clear wax. That way when we put the decorative wax on, we can manipulate it the way that we want. Kind of creates a barrier. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of decorative wax. This is the DIY's golden ticket and I'm just gonna come hit all the frames. these for free from my friend Sarah. She picks for me and she often throws in things that she's cleaning out of her warehouse, but I'm pretty sure that you can pick them up at the dollar store. The other thing too is these are just metal, ugly, basic tins that you can get thrifting or find around your house. And I hope this inspires you to recreate them into something pretty. The secret is the salt wash. It really makes the texture feel like almost like they're uh, like a clay pot or a terracotta pot, something like that. If you want to buy the paint products we use today, visit JamieRayVintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to share it out, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.